What is up, people? The internet. It is me, Real American, back again with a new video on this beautiful Easter Sunday. Guys, it is time for another special video. As many of you know, I don't usually like to discuss election stuff on holidays like Easter because, quite frankly, nobody wants to hear the election stuff. People just want to take a break from the election stuff. And while I would say the same thing for politics to an extent... People in particular just don't want to talk about elections at all during these time of years. Yes, politics is one thing, but you can, you know, usually respect, you can agree to disagree. But when it comes to who you're going to vote for, it doesn't usually end well. And I don't want to discuss it today. I don't want to cause conflict. Instead, I want to talk about something I think most people can agree with. We need to increase the fertility rate, not only in America, but in the West as a whole. This is the biggest crisis facing our world, not climate change. Again, when I say that, I'm not talking about, you know, the environment. I care for the environment. I want to make sure the environment is as clean as we possibly can. But the climate change cult is just ridiculous. You're talking about sending us back to the freaking Stone Ages to reduce carbon emissions when there's some evidence to say it doesn't change climate change. It really doesn't. It doesn't affect climate change at all. So we have to solve it. And again, I care for the environment. I believe we should have carbon capture technology, whatever. But this is one thing we can solve. The fertility rate. This isn't me bashing, you know, people that care for the environment. This is just me saying, there, what can we really do for the environment outside, of, you know, making sure our waters are clean and stuff. The, climb, the carbon emission stuff, I, I really, how much can we do? Carbon capture technology is one thing, but you're talking about sending us back to the Stone Ages. So I wanted to discuss something that I know for a fact we can affect, which is the fertility rate, not in just America, but in the Western Hemisphere as a whole. Now, before we continue, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the Twitter account in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Guys, just for $3 a month, you could join Real American, which is a phenomenal deal as it helps support the daily content that we all know and love. You know the daily content? Well, that is the best way to support it. So I hope and recommend you join the channel today all right everybody let's get into it so i think a lot of you know what the fertility rate is but for those that don't know the total fertility rate that's the metric we're using of a population is the average number of children that would be born to a female over their lifetime so yeah and there's other stuff like you know they were set to an ex uh, exact current age specific thing etc etc but essentially the higher the fertility rate, that means the most, the more people are, the more uh, women are, more children women are having. That's kind of what it means in a nutshell. And if you want to know, replacement level is 2.1. What does that mean? Well, when you get above 2.1 or you're at 2.1, that means there's a net gain of people being born than there are dying. That's kind of the idea because, okay, if a mother has two, let's say three kids, and of, of course there's a father involved, well, those two parents, they're going to die eventually. However, they lost three offspring, so they had a net gain of one. That's kind of what it means. Per generation, that was a net gain of one in that generation. That's the idea behind the fertility rate. Now, when you get the two... Two parents die, their two children live on. That's a net gain of nothing. But when you get below two, let's say a family only has one, that's a net gain of negative one. That's not good. And you notice here, look at 2020. There was not a single state, not even at 2.1, which is technically the replacement level. That means more people are being born than theoretically dying. They weren't even at two. The highest was South Dakota at 1.98. That means per woman, right, per mother, whatever you want to say, they were having two below two children per, uh, I guess you could say, lifetime. 
That isn't good. As many of you know, we are losing more people. If you do the math, more people are naturally dying than they are being birthed. That isn't a good thing. People are saying, oh, well, population's increasing. Yes, with unrestricted, unfettered immigration. You know me on immigration. I believe immigration is... I'm not saying, you know, limited immigration is, not a, is a problem. I'm saying the unrestricted nonsense that we currently got is a massive problem. Because it, it hides the fact that we're not... We have replacement level uh, birth rate below that. And our cultural identity is being torn apart without these people assimilating. This is the key. These people are not assimilating. That means they come here with their own cultural identity, which is fine. But a lot of them don't learn English. Let's be real. A chunk of them don't. A lot of them, they don't learn the cultural, cultural, or I guess you could say the culture of America. They never adapt to it. They never assimilate to it. Rather, they stick to their own cultural identity and they pass it on to their offspring. Now, I'm not saying all immigrants do that. I'm not saying other cultures are bad. I'm just saying we have a problem where kids that are from of immigrants, they are not assimilating to the culture of America. Some of them are, a chunk of them are, but a large amount of them, they're not assimilating. They're just keeping their parents' culture. And then they pass it down. Then they pass it down, etc., etc. It changes the cultural identity of the country, which never works. America has a culture. We have a cultural identity. Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, all that stuff, the Constitution, whatever you want to say it. We have our own identity. The, this cope that we somehow don't is ludicrous. We have our own identity. And, well, the immigration at some point is going to backfire. What's going to happen when a lot of these other countries, which their populations are just collapsing? I mean, Mexico, Central America, etc. I mean, look at the fertility rate of Mexico. It's the same as ours. Most of South America. Below us. And that's where a large chunk of our immigration is coming from. Same thing as Southeast Asia. And mind you, these areas, they're bringing their fertility rates with them. That means they are having below replacement birth rates. Do the math. It's only a matter of time before the population of America starts decreasing as a whole. And when you take out immigration from the fact, the equation, it already has. So we have to solve this. And again, this immigration stuff, I want restricted immigration. But that's not the point. The point is we need to naturally increase the birth rate. We cannot just rely on mass immigration. It doesn't work. It causes instability. And it's going to eventually backfire. So what can we do? Now... There has been some positive developments the past couple of years, namely relates to the issue of abortion. Now, let me be clear. We're not discussing the policy of abortion or what I believe in it. As everybody knows, I support banning abortion at a heartbeat, but that's not the point. We have several states that enacted heartbeat bills, abortion bans, even limited restriction of abortion like Montana and stuff. And well... Guess what? They've seen slight increases to the birth rate. Hmm. I was told that the uh, the abortion bill bans would not affect anything. Guess what? Texas. They saw an increase in birth rate. Not a lot, but in, from 2021 20 to 2022, when they enacted the abortion ban, they saw a subtle increase. And again, number is a bit early, so we just got to see. But based on what we're seeing... States that enacted these heartbeat bans, whatever, 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 abortion ban, they are seeing slight increase to the fertility rate, which is a sign that, yeah, abortion bans could and it does have a slight impact on the fertility rate, but it's not going to be enough. We have to enact family policy that is very similar to that of Hungary. Look. My opinion is this. Hungary has one of the best family policies in the world. And they have basically every single thing we need to enact to save America. 
we absolutely need to adapt to these policies. The Republican Party is going to call it socialism. Guess what? It's not. It's called protecting the culture of our country. Bringing the birth rates up just even a little bit. We need to if we want to save America. And there are more and more Republicans starting to realize we need to. Even Mitt Romney wants to support some programs like this. If Mitt Romney of all people are saying this is a good idea, we may have to change our policy on it. We have to. I've always supported policies like this. I mean, look at this. 2000, the birth rate was 1.32 in Hungary. In 2018, it was 1.55. So this cope that the um, these policies don't affect birth rate is baloney. Live births went up in Hungary. Fertility rate went up dramatically since 2000. I know a part of this was because of the Soviets col Soviet Union collapse in the 90s and stuff. But still, there is some evidence to say this works. So how does it work exactly? Well, there's many policies. They have support in salaries. So, a family tax benefit. Marriage support. The government introduced a discount for first married couples. Newly married couples receive together 5000 uh, HUF, I think that's Hungarian dollars, per month for 24 months after marriage. <clears throat> Housing support. Look at this. Look at this. The more children you get, the more allowance you get for getting a house. A larger house for more children you got. Maternity benefit. Child care. Free or reduced cost services for children. Support for parents. Support for grandmothers. Maternity benefit. Baby bonds, etc. Even for people outside of Hungary. This works. This is what we need to do. And I'm not saying, you know, every single one of these will exactly get the birth rate up to 15 births or something like that. But I am saying, however, we need to enact fairly similar family policies that we see in Hungary. Because they work. And people are calling them socialism. Guys, caring for your people isn't socialist. I'm getting sick of it. So, how can this be a bad thing? Maternity benefit, ch a child tax credit, marriage support. This isn't socialism. And it's clearly working. The birth rate is trending up and up and up in Hungary. Now, we don't got data from 2020 just yet, but I'm, or 2022, whatever. But I'm going to suspect they trended upward still. This is what we need to do to save America. The true crisis of our time is the fertility rate declining. We need to enact policies very similar to that of Hungary. It's working. And quite frankly, when you think about it, long term, it's going to save us money. Because more people in the workforce means more money for Social Security, means more tax revenue, means more economic growth. It just works. It's essentially an investment now for a payoff later. That's how I see it as. It's an investment. It is a good investment as well. We need to push for these family policies here in the United States. And do not bash as a socialism. I'm still disgusted what certain people did to Cassidy in Mississippi. He ran on a very similar platform as this. I am disgusted what these people did to him. He was right. We need to have family policy that increases the birth rate. Anyways, folks, thanks you so much for watching this Easter special. Godspeed to all of you.